Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I have three furniture flips for you guys and I am going to be using all of the trendiest styles for 2022 for these three flips. You guys voted and decided what colors you guys wanted to see on my channel and I'm going to be using two of them today on these projects. Two of these projects were given to me for free and the other one I bought from Goodwill. If you are really into furniture flips and thrift store shopping and thrift flipping in general or just secondhand finds are awesome to you, please consider hitting subscribe down below because I have tons of content for you like that on my channel. Twenty twenty two is a whole new year with a whole new color trend palette and I liked this palette a lot. I feel like it really represents a lot of the trends that are going on. You guys also voted and definitely <laughs> matched what was going on for the trends for 2022. So today I'm going to be doing beige or taupe as well as a beautiful botanical green. I'm going to start out with this dresser and this side table. They are not a matching set but I'm going to make them look like a matching set using some trendy hardware that is really popular right now. Brass is everywhere. <laughs> and this clean line look is something that you will see in high-end furniture, some places like Restoration Hardware, Pottery Barn, even probably Target, which is not exactly the high-end, but it's still what's really trending right now. So I'm going to make sure that both of these pieces have matching hardware. The current hardware that is on there is not the same size as the hardware I'm going to put on there. So I just need to fill in those holes and create some new ones to make sure that everything fits right. Now that I got all the old hardware off, it's time to fill in those holes. I'm not going to be staining this piece, and I couldn't even if I wanted to because it is not wood anywhere. None of this piece is real wood. So I'm using plastic wood, which is a really easy to use wood filler, to fill in all the holes. I find that it's easier to do it with my hands than it is to use any kind of spatula when you're filling in these small areas, and you need to overfill them just a little bit because it does shrink as it dries. This type of wood filler changes color as it dries so that you know when it's ready to sand it, which is a bonus. So since it has turned tan now, I'm going to go ahead and sand it. I tried hand sanding it first, but that was taking a little too long. So then I pull out the muscle, I got my orbital sander, and sand the whole piece up really quickly. My husband and I have been tag teaming a lot on my furniture projects lately. This is because I'm in my third trimester of pregnancy. The first trimester was super rough and I was sick all the time. Second trimester has been much better and then now I'm in the third trimester and the hunger and the tiredness is coming in fierce. <laughs> he goes in and sands this whole entire piece for me to, so that way I can just come back out and paint it when he's done.
it is time to reveal the first color. It is this beautiful taupe tan beige color that I got from the Miss Tint area at Home Depot. I think I paid $2 for it. You might recognize this color from a previous video that I have done. I did a side table in this color and I will link that video right up here in the top if you want to watch that as well. If you're new to my channel, you might be wondering why I'm painting this piece upside down. That is a signature that I do here on my channel and I always start my pieces upside down whenever it's possible. Sometimes the shape of a piece won't allow you to flip it upside down, but when you can, you should definitely start your pieces upside down. Whether you're spraying or hand painting does not matter. This way you make sure that you get a really nice even coverage along the bottom of the piece. Also, when you flip it right side up, you can see what places that you missed and vice versa. If you start it with it standing straight up, there's going to be pieces that you cannot see from that perspective. So starting it upside down helps you get the best coverage possible. About two weeks from now, I have something really exciting for all of my viewers. I am going to be hosting the Ugly Duckling Challenge again. This will be my winter Ugly Duckling Challenge. I try to host this every season, although with life happening and being a normal person, sometimes I don't get in every season for this challenge. But the winter one is going to be a really good one. We have a huge amount of YouTubers lined up to participate in the Ugly Duckling Challenge. What this challenge is, is I challenge other people to find something really, really ugly and make it beautiful again. <laughs> the uglier, the better when it comes to this challenge because the winner is chosen by me as the one with the biggest transformation. The winner also gets to be shared on every participant's YouTube channel. So that will help other YouTubers get their name out there and show their talent to a larger audience that they normally would not have gotten to be a part of. So if you're watching this right now and you have a YouTube channel or you wanted to start a YouTube channel or you just want to upload a video of you fixing up something that was really ugly and making it beautiful again, I'm going to have the rules to the challenge posted in the description box of this video. So check that out if you want to be a part of it. When it comes time to paint this bigger dresser, I do the same exact method. Start upside down so that way you make sure not to miss the little areas like this little ledge from underneath. Had the dresser been right side up, you may not have remembered to paint that ledge that's right there. Also, this is a really good view of how this dresser is not wood. It is, I believe that's called particle board. <laughs> if there's another word for it, let me know in the comments, but it's not wood. It's pretty heavy because of all the glue I'm guessing that's in a particle board but it is definitely not real wood and so do not feel bad that this piece is getting painted. Lately I've been painting a lot with a paintbrush, mostly because I'm pregnant and I just am not wanting to do a lot of like sprayed paint since all the particles get all in the air and are, make it breathable, get into your skin and whatnot. So I've been painting by hand and this piece tested my patience quite a bit. Getting into all those little grooves of that design was not that fun with the brush. <laughs> I'm not somebody who feels like it's therapeutic to try and paint all the little grooves of a dresser like this. But watching it change before my eyes is what motivates me to do these things. 
I don't always enjoy the little tedious parts and nobody should have to enjoy every single part of what they do, but seeing the change that this piece is going through right before my eyes makes this so much fun. Something I thought that was worth mentioning is that when you have a piece like this, it had drips on it, it had texture from somebody rolling with a paint roller on here on it, and I didn't want to fuss with creating the perfectly smooth finish on here because it's not real wood, and I was afraid the more I mess with it, the more the bad stuff was going to come out. <laughs> it's like when you're in an old home and you have to renovate it. And if you have to take this wall down, you're going to find all sorts of bad stuff in there. <laughs> so I tried to avoid that. And instead, I went over it with a flat or matte paint. Matte paint hides imperfections really, really well. So if you're somebody who either doesn't have the tools to do it or don't have the energy to do it or the physical ability to do all that prep work, use matte paint and get a better finish that way. Once the paint was finished drying, my husband came in to do the things that he does best, which is all the meticulous measurements and the exact type of work. I'm more of an eyeballer. I just like to see something and be creative with my hands and do things without measuring. <laughs> he is the opposite. And that is why we work so well together when we do these types of projects and just as a married couple in general because things that I lack in he does really well with so <laughs> and vice versa as well since he likes to do more precise things he tends to not be able to imagine something before it's created so I have that type of mind and he has the more logical mind and together we work really really well on all of these types of projects and that is also how we were able to renovate our entire house together I know they say renovating a home can make or break a marriage and it did not affect us negatively. If anything, we work even better together now. Since I'm using latex paint and also a very matte paint, I wanted to go over the tops of each of these pieces with a clear coat in a little bit higher of a sheen, which is a satin, so that it's more durable and easier to clean on the surface that's going to get used the most. When you're using latex paint, even though it comes with primer in it and with a sealer in it, you still should seal the surfaces that are going to get beat up with wear and tear. I'm going to move on to the next project before I do the reveals. I'd rather do them all together at the end. So for this next project, I had three random green colors that have just been sitting in my stash of paint. And in true desert DIY fashion, I'm going to mix them together and see what happens. <laughs> I had no idea what kind of green this was going to turn into. I just had kind of um, a visual of what I thought it would be and it turned out really, really well. So I mixed in a Dixie Belle paint and then two of a craft store brand chalk paint into this beautiful botanical green color. Right here it was looking a little too pea green or like olive drab green <laughs> and I wanted to lighten it up a bit so I used that minty color to lighten it up as much as I could fit into this jar 
that was <laughs> my <laughs> my scientific measurement was just do as much as I could fit in this jar and still be able to mix it. And thankfully it turned out really beautiful. I think you're gonna love this color. Unfortunately, my before footage of this next piece got erased somehow, but it is a coffee table. I got it from Goodwill for $9.99, and I, it was also military discount day, so I got a discount on top of that. And it's a navy blue sort of charcoal-y color and very heavily distressed. I can appreciate the beauty that this was. But at the same time, this is not what's trending now. It is what was trending maybe last year or a couple years before that. And this video is all about trying out the new trends of 2022. Even though this is not the style of my own home, I love to try different styles. One, because it's fun. <laughs> and two, because I know that not everybody is gonna have the same taste that I do. And so I like to give a big variety of different types of projects on my channel, even if they're not exactly my style. I can still appreciate the beauty in something just because it's a beautiful thing. I painted this in my living room in my pajamas. And it was an awesome day. <laughs> and my son, who's two years old, didn't get into the paint. It was like my lucky day. The green turned out perfect. My son didn't put his hands in the paint. I didn't get any paint on my pajamas or my floor. I don't know how this all happened. I should have bought a lottery ticket that day. Do you ever have days like that where just everything seems to go right and you're just waiting like what's gonna go wrong? <laughs> waiting for the other shoe to drop. The other shoe did not drop this day. And I want to hear about days like that. If you've had any recently days like that, just let me know in the comments down below because sometimes it can feel like days like those will never come. And so hearing from other people that they're having these magical days where everything goes right might help other people who are having a hard time to think that there will be a sunny day in their future. Also, hearing from other people what they feel is like the perfect day is a really good way to get perspective on what makes a great day or not because to me what made this day a great day was just that I didn't have any complications with my projects and I got to do them comfortably in my pajamas to other people the perfect day may be something else and I would love to hear what your perfect day was or is so that it can give me some perspective as to the different kinds of lives people live and the different things that make people happy Since I did use a chalk paint, I'm definitely going to have to seal this piece. I used the same sealer that I used before on the other two, which is in a satiny finish. Now remember what we were working with here. A dresser with two upside down handles, a nightstand that had seen better days, and they turned into this. Can you even believe the soft cashmere finish that this now has? I am stunned by what this color can do, and I can't wait to use similar colors on future pieces. These brass handles really finish off this look, and I have them linked in my Amazon store in my description box down below. The coffee table went from distressed and dark to bright, vibrant, botanical green. This is one of the pieces that I have actually sold recently. I am trying to meet some financial goals, so some of my projects I am selling, and I like to sell on Facebook Marketplace. Thank you all so much for watching. I had a blast doing these projects today, and if you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe down below. 